welcome to Players in Exile, my name is Phil, and today I'd like to review an adventure called Halls of the Goblin King by Carl Vandal. I'd like to clarify as we start that Carl has asked me to review this and has provided me with a review copy of the adventure. However, he hasn't paid me in any way to complete the review. The opinions that I'm going to express in this piece are my own, and the eventual score that I will give to this adventure is also my own. So also the Goblin King, as it says here, is a four to six hour adventure for seven to eight level characters. Uh, it's a, it, Carl indicates it's for five to six players, and it's set in the Forgotten Realms. Having looked through the adventure, I would say that you could quite easily downscale it. You could run this for third, fourth level characters without a problem at all whatsoever. Whether you could run it for higher or not, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, you are talking about goblins. They do tend to be a little bit squishy, and players with lots of action economy would probably chew their way through them pretty quickly. So the action, as, I, as I've said, is set in the Forgotten Realms, but it wouldn't be too difficult to adapt it to run your own homebrew or into a different location. The adventure itself comes with a map to show the location of where it is set in the Forgotten Realms, which is really quite cool. I had a look at my larger map, which I got in uh, Horde of the Dragon Queen, and I could find exactly where it was on that map, and kind of made me think, oh, okay, that's pretty neat. So I did like that. The adventure itself is, I would piece it, as it says, it's a four to six hour adventure. So it's either a slightly long, it's probably a two session adventure, really. Um, it's either a side quest, so your players have just completed sort of one major part of a story. You want to do something different with them for a couple of a couple of sessions. You could run this, uh, or if you, you you've got you just want to run a a two session game, you know, a quick one off almost. I could see the players getting through this very 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 quickly in a certain scenario, especially if they're a bunch of pacifists, which is rare in my experience for Dungeons and Dragons players. Most of them tend to be murder hobos and will talk with their weapons first and their spells first before their role play abilities. But there is a way you could just literally go through this adventure very smoothly very quickly no combat whatsoever and be very successful in it so that's that to bear in mind one of the things i believe cole has done is, is to write adventures which i think run on after this one so if you were thinking about playing this adventure and then you wanted it to, to go on with some of the characters in it with some of the ways things have happened and some of the locations and events in this uh cole does have alternative adventures available the adventure itself breaks down into three parts the first part is your initial setup and how your players end up uh, going on this particular adventure. Uh, so that's quite short. The second part I really did like is a journey. So it's traveling from where they get the adventure to where the, the halls of the Goblin King are. And it travels over a mountainous terrain, which is why you've got the mountain pictures on, on the back of the adventure there. And I think Carl's done a very good job of making that feel perilous, making that feel uh, part of the adventure. I like a lot of the ideas he uses in this part of it. I'm probably going to borrow those, even if I don't run the adventure specifically. So I found that that's a good reprieve from just saying, oh, you've travelled from A to B, now we're going to do this. There's, there, there's random events and sort of weathery things and other things that can happen. I won't go into them too much, but uh, it's well worth... Uh, having a look at that if you do opt to purchase this particular adventure and then you get to the third part and the third part is where you get to the, the sort of the fortress where the, the the goblin king has set up his his throne if you like and the ways that you can get into that fortress or the players i would say could get into that fortress whether they they decide to just hack and slash their way through everything or maybe choose a more diplomatic path the options are there from them you do get a three layer map for the the fortress and for the price of this particular adventure which i'll go over in a minute i think that's it's worth the price alone you can use that you can literally take it out of this and you could use it in any any adventure I've got sort of a ground floor level first level and a basement level i think having that in your tool set especially as a digital dm is invaluable and yeah as i say worth the price of, of the adventure alone one of the things I would say, and this is no reflection on Carl's adventure at all whatsoever, is as a DM, especially as a digital DM, I would really prefer if we were provided with two copies of each map. One without labels, without a key, and one with a key. The key for me to use as a DM sat here, and the one without a key to be used di digitally. I find if, if players see a key automatically on a the map, they're like, oh, what's that? What's that? What's that? I'll go there and have a look there because there's obviously something there. Uh, it takes away sort of a bit of the surprise, a, a bit of the sort of the area description and stuff like that. 
Um, but that's not a detraction of Carl and he's a he, and the adventure he's put together here. That's something you find in a, in a lot of books. You'll find that in, in official Dungeons and Dragons books from what see. You'll find that in pretty much most adventures. It's just a personal niggle that I would just thought I'd mention during this review. There are various monsters that uh, can appear in this adventure, and their stat blocks are provided in an appendix at the end of the, of the adventure. There is a variety there. They're not all goblins, although a vast majority of them are. Um, and the, you know, the party can, as I say, literally hack and slash their way through a whole heap of goblins if they don't die to the sheer numbers. There's uh, the Goblin King himself. Now, one of the things I would say about the Goblin King himself is that Matt Coville did a video which I think is called Action Orientated Monsters or Action Oriented Monsters. I'll put a link to it in the description down below. If you are a budding DM, digital or otherwise, it's really worth a watch. And it, he describes how he would use this action oriented system on a goblin boss. And I would I think it would marry up really, really well with this adventure. I think if you took all of his ideas I think you should sort of study his ideas and then make them implement them with, with other things. But if you took his ideas and put them into the, the the Goblin King in this in this particular adventure, I think you'd get a really, really good... The, the Goblin King himself is solid at the moment, but I think he would be even better. I think he would really stand out as sort of like at the end of the end of the boss. It would be impactful. It would be memorable. And it's really worth having a look at both of them together. And I think that that would be really strong, genuinely. I'm tempted to actually try that to just, just on some players, just for a couple of sessions, just to see how well that would actually work. Oh, one last thing in the appendix. Uh, there's also a magic item. Rather than listed a magic item, won't go into it much more than that, but there is another uh, magic item listed in the appendix as well, which which was quite a nice little, little touch. The final part of the adventure is how to divvy up the XP, depending on how the uh, adventurers have gone about this. One of the things I think you could do, and I don't know if Carl's included this in, in some of his later adventures, is you could use this to have your players gain sort of notoriety or, or, or gain points with different factions or lose points with different factions, depending on how they decide to resolve it. So they may, may go up in the esteem of, of, say, the dwarves, but they may go down in, in, in the opinions of other goblins or whatever. However you wanted to play it, I think there is a, a way to, to, to balance that. And that's a, a, a nice idea I think I would also like to explore. Halls of the Goblin King. Costs a mere $2.95 on Dungeon Master's Guild. So in English money, that's a little tiny bit over £2 sterling. You get a decent adventure. It's well written. It's well laid out. It's got some nice maps in it that are very usable. It's really reasonably priced. I'm certainly going to use the ideas in it, if not actually run it itself. I'm going to give this a solid 8 out of 10. It has a massive of value for money at that price. And I would genuinely recommend that you go and check it out. I'm going to put a link to Dungeon Masters Guild where you can buy this in the comments below. As I said, I'm going to put a link to Matt Coville's video as well. And neither of which I'm a sponsor to do, but both of which I found useful. I hope you've enjoyed this review. I'm hoping to do many more. If you have enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And join me next time on Players in Exile.